Hi everyone. I'm a little early. <laughs> I was just trying to uh, finish one up and I thought I'll just turn it on since I'm ready. Hi Joyce. <laughs> Hi everybody, hi Patty. So good to see everybody sort of be together, sort of. Yay. I'm just going to finish um, work on this for just a couple of minutes, see where I can get it, and then uh, I won't start until until 1, just in case people are still joining. I've got my Swax trying to heat up. I'm not sure. And I have to figure out how to call Kyla. Which shouldn't be the hardest component of all of this. Maybe she'll call me. Oh, she did. You're so smart. Oops, I spoke too soon. Let's see, what color do you want on here? Light green, pink. Yay, thank you for the hugs. Virtual hugs are good. Let's see, maybe I should try to call Kyla. I was just saying how smart you are. Oh, you were? Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, I gotta figure out how to call Kyla. I couldn't remember if you called me or if I called you. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting very good at setting up the live stream. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, oh, I meant to grab tea before we started. Oh, yeah. Do you think I can grab tea real quick? I mean, I think you can do whatever you want. <laughs> All right, I'm grabbing some tea. <laughs> I'm leaving you on the table. the table. Let me see if I can turn you up. Oh, that's, yeah. You are up. I'm going to put you right there. Last time you put me by the computer so everyone could hear better. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I think the audio is from my laptop. Yeah. Just the video is from the, from oh, really? the webcam. Yeah. Apparently, I cannot be heard well, so if you move me over. Yeah, I did. I don't know. You sound a little quieter to me today, but I don't oh, know. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Someone said I, I started myself, early. I didn't I really... I have myself up. Oh, it sounds like I'm underwater. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, do we... Do you want to try my myself? Um, someone just said that's better. Oh. I'll just yell. I'll just shout. Everyone wants to hear me shouting. Three to 
phone. Did you hear a honk a couple minutes ago? No. No. Did you drive by? I did. <laughs> I was leaving South Appleton from a walk. Oh. And I honked on my way by. A lot. That's funny. <laughs> I, when I arrived today, there was a little card and a little gift for me. And this is from Kyla, and it's one of her nests. And I think it's uh, so cool how there's a nest style. So I feel like if I had a, I have an Izzy nest, a Lee nest, um, a Paige nest, a Kyla nest. I'm trying to think, I think that's it, my own, I guess. And I feel like if you lined them up, new ones, I would be able to tell whose is whose. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you. I love it. And, um, I offered to trade for a hummingbird, so, um, we should, we should make one. You should make a hummingbird. Yeah. I think some people showed up to make one. Yeah. Yay. Okay. So they can hear you better now. Okay, cool. It's evening in the Netherlands. So what I love about hummingbirds, kind of like the pocket gnomes, is that um, you can use sort of anything. So I had a few questions about a supply list, and um, I think what, what part of what makes this a great project right now is that we can use some of the scraps that we have um, left or around because it takes very little wool. Yeah, so, they're tiny. Yeah, and I've actually been making them smaller, and I've changed it a little bit since the, um, well, the, the way that I'm making it, them is a little bit different than the, um, than the tutorial that's currently online, and I'll explain in one second. I, I was using a toothpick for the beak, and it's cute, and it works, but um, if they break, then your sculpture is kind of done for. So what I've been making lately, excuse me, is on a 22 gauge wire. And I'm cutting the 22 gauge wire um, into four pieces. It's, it's about four and a half inches. Um, they're 18, so then you got nine, then you've got four and a half. And you don't have to be um, you can be particular with it or not, but kind of fun to have them a little bit different sizes. So I have lots of these cut up pieces. And like I said, I'm trying to get my swax melted. Oh, there it is. This is some like ancient swax. I feel like I like dug it out of some ruins, um, but it looks okay. It's this one has black pigment, and um, if it doesn't have black pigment, it's okay. Just be careful not to put it on too thick, because you don't want your beak to become opaque. So. So you're not using a tacky wrap stick. You are just using the wire. Yeah, I'm just using the wire. A tacky wrap stick would be great. You could take your wire and tacky wrap it if you have it. And I'm not turning the end either because these are too tiny and it would make a bulky, um, it would make a bulky end. So I'm going to use, you could use black. I'm going to use this kind of, it's like a natural black. See how that looks. But, oh, so here's some, here's some that are started. This is the old style kind of, um, in that I did it on the Zuli tool. So it's, you can see it's a little bigger, which is fun because then you're not as, you have a little more um, options with your locks because the smaller you go, sort of the, the more refined you have to get in your fibers. Yeah, and this is another one. And I feel like when you make them, they kind of, 
might already give you a shape that they want to be because I feel like they're either like they're either like going backwards and kind of curled up in a crunch or they're you know reaching up and, and curved like that so just something about wrapping them kind of if you read the wrap you'll sort of see a shape that it wants to be this is this is one that I finished um, in preparation I just tried to go I tried to go really small and to me that ends up a little too fussy for me um, but it's cute it's cute this is a silk um, silk yak silk yak mix I used for the wings so the wings can be anything the tail can be anything this is a piece of silk ribbon I stuck in there and I liked how it's kind of like sharp like gave it a little more sharpness and then the one I was just working on I have um, lock wings lock tail and I was just getting into some of the some of the color details but I'm gonna set this one aside and start a new one with you guys Someone's asking, would adding black acrylic paint to beeswax work for making a tacky, a tacky wax? Yeah. I can't imagine that would dry. I don't know how the water-based acrylic will respond. Sorry, I'm just having like a pain in my shoulder. Will respond with um, the wax. And then the thing with beeswax is when you put it on top of wool, it tends to sort of dry and flake. Like it doesn't have the malleable property that tacky wrap has or that swax has. Um, but you can certainly use beeswax to help the wool stick. If you put the beeswax on the wire. Yeah. Okay. Um, as skinny as possible here, you know, you, you want their beaks to look petite. So I've just got a very thin, very thin piece. Does 22 gauge wire work okay? That's what you have. That's Is what it? I have, 22 gauge, okay. yeah. And I start like kind of farther back than the beak would really be, you know, um, because it's, this is gonna get wool on it also. So on the end, before I wrap with fiber, I'm going to stick a little swax on there so that I can use it to help my fiber stick as I push into it. And then I'm going to turn around and go back. And Kyla has been in nest production. Um, Marsha does very, she's used to doing high volume <laughs> production with her beads. So what I did was um, when I cut my wire in four, I did four of these. You know what I mean? Like your swax is hot. You might as well make them all. And I, if I can, I make the back a little thicker then the tip by, you know, by putting a little more wool there, like you kind of want it to taper as it, as it moves towards the tip. I like having a bunch kind of made and ready to go. Yeah. Different, yeah. Different steps. Sometimes you're in the mood for the armature part, you know, sometimes you're in the mood for, um, the details or just. Right. Yeah. What was the wire length again? You cut it in quarters? I cut it into quarters, which is about about four and a half inches, anywhere between four and five inches. So I'll do another one. Um, but the point is not to do two necessarily. I'm not going to keep doing two. I'm just going to do one more um, to show it, to show the process again. I watched an interesting little um, tutorial on the UK page yesterday and she had a different way of wrapping tiny fingers I can't say it because I didn't try it or totally understand it but it was it was neat to see I love how there's always 
different approaches, you know. Could you pepper pull this beak? Um, sure. It, it's so small, like, I feel like it's, I feel like we're going to, we're going to put the swax on top, and I like that. Um, I like that and the way it looks, and so that's what I do. Pepper pull's really interesting. If you haven't played with it, you should, because whatever your fiber is doing, it hardens it. So it almost like accentuates um, the texture, whereas swax will kind of fill in the texture a little bit. So it's interesting when we did the elephants, like experimenting on the tusks. Right. Yeah. Wax is more forgiving. Uh, yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Pepper pulls like commitment. <laughs> yes. I mean, they're both a commitment, but. Yeah. Someone's asking, it's a little off topic, would wrapping my armature wire with wax thread, especially around joints, help with preventing armature failure? They've had wing and leg breakage. Um, I don't, I mean, it would be a backup. I don't think that it would keep the armature from failing because, so something's happening and we, I feel like we went over this maybe in the bunnies or someone live recently where when you twist your shoulders anywhere that where there's um, a wire coming out of another wire, um, if it's the shoulders and wings, particularly like the legs and wings, you might be twisting in a way that the wing or leg wire has a lot of work to do to be in the position it needs to be in. And you want it to just flow out of the twist into the position that it needs to be in. It's hard to explain um, or to know what's happening without seeing it. But, um, and if you're making something bigger, more wires twisted together rather than a thicker wire helps. Okay. So now I have this black on here. I'm going to put swax right on top and I just kind of do a swipe on three or four sides. You don't want to overdo it because you can always put a little more. Give it a second to dry and then just smooth it in. And what's cool about this too is you can sort of shape it a little bit into the flat um, their beaks are, you know, have like a little kind of edge to them. And it's not quite covered properly, so I need to put just a little bit more, especially right here. Yeah, I just love the way it like shines up. And I've had these where like a little bit came off the end and then you just trim it with scissors and, and I feel like the swax gives you a lot of um gives you a lot of potential to fix mistakes. Yeah, power pole power pole or, or power tax, it's glue, it basically is what it is. It's white glue. It's a little different than craft glue or Elmer's glue because of um, something in the way that they process it. Um, there's like a temperature change. And the, the difference is that it hardens and becomes um, weatherproof. It definitely helps when you show um, in front of your hand. Okay, good. All right, so this one is a little chunky on the end, so I'm just going to keep pinching it. I'm pulling it until it's pointy and then it's got like a it's got like a swax fiber booger um, and I can just cut that off and then if I need to I can put a little bit more but I think it's good actually someone's asking how you keep the wool on the point of the beak there is a slipping off and I think that has to do with going to the edge and then pointing backward so you're definitely when you are doing an end with this wrapping technique 
whether it's a foot or a beak or a tiny finger or whatever, and you're at the end of the wire. So I'm left-handed, so I kind of wrap downward in this direction, but it doesn't matter, right? You know, you're wrapping down the wire. When you get to the end of it, you can't linger there. You can't go straight around it. You have to go down, and then when you come around, you angle back up, and that, like, locks it down on the tip. It takes a little bit of practice. Okay, so I'm going to turn off my swax, get it out of the, out of the way. It's always good to remember that you turned off the swax, so when you're on your way home, I gotta You're tell like, you, turn the off. I have to confess something to you, not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone can guess. <laughs> it's a little bit extra bad, I'll tell you that later. <laughs> okay, so now I want to get some fiber onto the whole thing. And I've done this a couple of different ways. Um, I've used the Face Ace or the Zoli tool or, you know, like I said, if you don't have those things... Um, you can use a pencil, paintbrush handle, um, or since you have this rather stiff wire here, you could just wrap the wire. So let's do the face ace technique. Um, so basically I just position, hold this on the tool with the beak sticking out about, how far is that? An inch and a half? Well, I have to prepare my core wool first. And then I've been using like a darker core on the head and off-white chunky core on the body. So I've got some um, lapis, I think, here. It's a, it's a bright blue core wool. But anything green, red, I mean, anything that just... Their heads are so small and colorful that if you use the white, it tends to tends to poke through. So it's a little tricky just holding the wire on there and then getting a wrap going on. And I'm just crisscrossing um, right in an inch at the end of the tool on the what's going to be the head area. So basically, as if you were wrapping a little, you know, bean or seed there. And then I have the rest of my wire just aiming down the tool. And I used um, a quarter of a, you know, four, about a four inch piece. Sorry, I should have, should have said that. I am loving the face ace. Yeah. Oh, I know. Small it's, has its, its place if you need that little bit smaller. Yeah. I have um, about a five or six inch piece of off-white chunky core. I'm going to quarter it. And stretch those out so they're not quite... Whoops, I stretched that one a little too much. I'm not sure how many pieces I'm going to use yet. And then I'm just starting at the end of the wire, coming up towards the head, turning around. And I'll do that again. And I want to concentrate, you know, make them a little bigger where his chest and belly would be. So let the tail end taper. And it's okay to put a little more wool in the middle of this entire shape here. Don't you feel like Needle felting is like, it's like you have a little superpower. You have a little special secret that the 
I mean, a lot of us know about it now, but there's a lot of people who don't. It's pretty amazing what can be created, for it's, sure. It is. It is. I'm a, I'm a little bit itching to do uh, something big soon. Ah. Mm -hmm. Challenge myself. I'm going to go back to the head color. In part to get where these two colors meet, you want to wrap so that you don't have a weak, you know, neck, neck spot. And then I think I'll put one more piece of core. And I kind of don't know yet, like what's top, what's bottom. I've got to pull it off and play with it. Mm -hmm. You want this to be pretty tight, you know, like it's its own little, little form and no wimpy wraps. No wimpy wraps. It's going to be, it's going to be easier if it's, that's one of the things about the Zuli tool is it came off a little because there's so much tool in the middle, it came off a little, um, a little loose. It took quite a bit of stabbing. Okay. Okay. Now, having a hummingbird reference picture is a great idea. They have such a specific shape to their heads. And I think that's a spot that people could get them a little bit more hummingbird if they, um, if you could see that and, and recreate that. So I'm going to just take one second to bring one up on my laptop because I need it to. There's tons and tons of varieties and some of them have like a rounder head or like dome. And then some of them have like almost like a flat kind of a squareness to the backs of their heads. Um, I'll try to show, <laughs> show, let me see if this is, it's going to be totally annoying. I might not do it well, but like that to me really shows the shape. So hopefully I'm holding that in the right place. I can't tell, but you're on a delay, so I can't tell you. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can hear you on time, but the video is yes. <laughs> watching is a little behind, so. I understand. I'll play in a minute. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> People have their own pictures, but. So, I'm looking at the reference picture. Whoops. Be careful, because you can pull this wire right out. So, it's a good idea to stab on there a little bit. I think actually a couple of times I wrapped, after I swacked the beak, I wrapped the rest of the wire tightly with a little bit of core. That way, when you put it on the tool and wrap the tool, it's got something to grab, grab into because it will, it will pull out. All right, about, so. About how thick is the body? Mine's about an inch. Like if I put my thumb on it, it's just, just wider than my thumb. Their beak also has ever so slight curve. So once you pick your direction, you can um, kind of curve the beak just a little bit. And then the other thing that's cool is you can put a little bend in the wire and do a little crisscross wrap like we do when we have a bend in our wire and accentuate the shape of the head. So I've positioned this, but I want to build this up a little bit. So I'm going to wrap here and then here and then here and then here.
So now I'm using the, the bend in the wire to make my little hummingbird head shape better. Hopefully. That was kind of a weird piece of roving, so I didn't have a ton of control over it. Everything you do now pretty much will be your top coat colors? Mm, I'm still using core. Okay. So is the head color not your final head color? The head color is like this deep blue, but right. I'm just using it because I want it to be a dark color. Gotcha. I don't know. I make their heads all different colors. I love the ones that are like that deep brown green on the top. And then, I mean, like a traditional ruby throat would be dark on the top of the head, red, white, um, with grays and, and vibrant greens on the rest of the body. So it's pretty cool. I mean, they can be anything. I'm going to give this one an S shape. Partly in bending the wire, partly in the way I'm felting the wool. I just stab this butt because it just becomes a little tapered end that their um, tail feathers rest on. I wish I could see you guys. Love to see what's how your shapes are coming. It is so cool to see. I mean, I know that we have people all over yeah. the country and the world, but it's yeah. really neat to see yeah. everybody connect on here. Could we see the PC photo? Oh, you could see it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, when you held it, yeah. Okay. I'm just kind of taking my time to give people... Oh, I'm going to close. I don't think I need Facebook. Everybody's pretty much commenting on on YouTube, correct? I think so. Yeah. I haven't yeah. really been looking too much. My last bite of chocolate. I'm going to be very self-aware about eating it. Well, you're on video, so we're all watching. Yeah. <laughs> no judgment. Because sometimes I don't pay attention, and I'm really sad that it's not there anymore. It's very good. Okay. So here's where it gets fun, I think. Oh, you know what I did? I closed my... Oh, no, there it is. I was going to say I closed mine. If you need to build the chest out a little. You can do a little um, off-white chunky core or Serafina white um, shingle just to add. So I'm, I took a little strip. I'm pointing the fringe towards the tail. I'm felting it down on the belly and then I'm going to turn it over and felt the rest of the fringe onto itself and that just gives me gives me instead of wrapping 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 that just gives me a little more bulk on the on the chest what kind of fun colors do you guys have that's like that's the fun i got this ribbon out i thought maybe i would try it <sighs> Such an aqua. Can't seem to get their to stop moving around. The what? Someone can't seem to get their beak to stop moving around. Their beak? Yeah. Yeah. You just have to like stab right through there. Stab right through the whole thing to get to that wire. Um, and then when I when I did the head wrap, that seemed to help too because then I was wrapping right right onto the beak. I'm eating pens. Just gonna toss that out there. I'm not a chocolate person. Yes, you like your fruity candies. Pens, 
Pez. I have orange Pez. I'm going to cut a few of these. I'm going to do three. They're a little wrinkly, but I'm going to trust that if I cut the ends into points, it'll look cool. And if you do, I mean, chances are you don't have silk ribbon hanging out. So on this one, for example, I found a little section of locks, found the pretty tippy ends that I wanted. I brushed out the, um, the other end and I, and I figured out how long I want it to stick off the body and then I felted it down onto the body. Whether you're using roving, locks, silk, ribbon, it's all the same process. You're gonna position it where you want it and stab this on. So for me with this, it's going to be about using a little wool on top. I do not like the feeling of stabbing in through this ribbon, but I'm gonna persevere. Is it silk? It's silk, yeah. Yeah, silk is weird. It doesn't feel right. Stab it too. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't feel like, you feel like you're destroying it. Not a good feeling. Why did I think you wanted this, Kyla? I know you can't see it. It's a um aqua. What were we talking about? We tied them on those awesome lollipops. No, this is um the background color that I made a bat that I made for the two D oh, rooster. They were for my head, for my head. Oh, for your eggs! Yes. Ah. Mm -hmm. oh. I wish I had heard your beep. <laughs> I would have run out. <laughs> What's that? I said, which I'm joking. My horn. I got that. Oh. It's a gas reference. I've been spending a lot of time with my son. <laughs> <laughs> Stick this on there. Make it stick. Ugh. Don't listen. Close your ears. Probably should sew it. it would be smarter <laughs> and less creepy. But who wants to get out the sewing stuff? Whole extra step. Whole extra step. All right, so there's my little, my little tail ribbons. I just got them stuck just enough. And as I do more, they'll stick more. If you were just using fiber, what would you know on the tail? Just kind of shingles? So if you're just using fiber, um, if you have lock ends, try to find like a coordinating color to cover up those lock ends. It's a little bit, we're going to put the wings on next and then you kind of shingle towards the head, um, so that all your colors blend from head to head to tail. Okay, so wings, hmm, hmm. I have this bag of random, I think this was like nest, we were making nest locks for the website and I was like, ooh, that's good stuff. I'm <laughs> stealing some of that. You got a big bag. Ooh, yeah. The wings, you can never have too many locks. No. The wings could be gray. They could be natural. Um, this is really pretty. This is a Surrey. I think I'll do this and then anchor them with a green. So 
trick is finding two sections that are similar. Alright, so I found two sections of Surrey. What I like about locks or even roving is you can make it come to kind of a natural tip. So I don't get real fussy with the wing being exact, an exact triangular shape. Or, um, but I do want to trim a little bit of this off at the end. one's a little shorter already. I love the simple body shape that you're like already yeah. done. Not yeah. done, but finishing. Oh, my beak got blunted. <laughs> it was all like, <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to take some of this leaf green. Really, like I'm saying, whatever colors you use that they are if you do a, you know do search for some inspirational pictures they are every color under the rainbow every single one orange purple green pink blue just to get this started i'm going to put a little bit of this at the base of this lock and the reason i want to do it before i put it on is because i want no, it's hard to see. I want the roving tips to blend into the alpaca so that I get like a transition. I'll hold it up. I'll just do it from this side a little bit. This is also a time to blend colors just in your hands. Kind of brush you use to brush out locks? I just have a dog brush here. Like a wire, like a flipper brush? Yeah. Yeah. So the green is just kind of tapering away into the gray. And I just did a little bit on each side. And the, the having the wool in addition to the alpaca will help me um, blend it, attach it to the hummingbird. This one is a little bigger. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Oh, I'm a little sighy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think there is a collective sigh happening. Yeah. Yeah. Daily, hourly. That looks like such pretty color. It is a pretty color. It's a really soft, soft green. Okay. So then I just want to pick how long I want my wing to be by where I position this on the back. I think um, on the tutorial, we, we've also done it coming up off the edge. Um, but I think I like to go across the back a little bit more because that's a little more natural with how the bird um, shape actually works. And then if you want them sticking straight up in the air, you can add a little fiber and really felt them that way. But this, they could be down. You know, this gives you a little more options. So I'm just trying to make sure they're about the same on both sides. I think that's okay. I think one's a little bigger than the other, but whatever. What's that? World size on that wing triangle. Like about what size wing are you putting on? Um. My wings ending up about three inches long, about an inch wide at the base. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not huge. No. Mm -mm.
So that's how it looks right now. It's funny, these want to curl. I should have put it on the other way. These want to curl down. I might have to straighten them, iron them or something. Who was just talking about ironing wool? Julie. Mm -hmm. Saying how it's her new favorite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now to get to take away this crisscross that's going on here, I just want to shingle a little bit of my back color up, up the back. So I'm pointing fiber towards the tail felting it on in the middle and then folding it over. And then I'll just do that again. And I'll, I'll turn it around and show it to you in one second. That further holds on the wings and then also gives your bird a back. That makes a little more sense. The second shingle I'm taking just about up to the, like the back of the neck and the base of the head. All right, so that's where it is. I probably, it's a little fuzzy looking. I'm going to I'm going to stab that a little bit more as we go. So the head is the tricky part because it's so tiny and it's so varied in what they can be. Just try to keep it simple. Um, I feel like a little red, either just directly stab or make a tiny little triangle um, for this area works really well. And then same thing, a triangle of color um, that just fades at the tip of the beak here, comes back and folds over, can build the head shape out really well. And then where the two triangles meet or don't meet, that's where they sort of naturally have different markings anyway. So that's where their eye goes too. So I'll show you, um, I'm gonna use this red this is a new bat that we're working on um, that we'll have for you guys shortly once the world decides that we can move on <laughs> with our plans. Um, and this has some silk in it. But I'm going to stab a center line and make a little triangle guessing at how, what this this looks like here. And then I think I'll trim the bottom because this is a really long stable length. Someone's asking me to move my phone to hear me better. I didn't think the phone moved, but I don't know. The phone? I might have moved it. I feel like my cell is so much better. You want to try it? Let's try it. You want me to call yourself? Sure. Yeah. All right. Let's try it. Fine. I'm hanging up on you. Okay. Bye. <laughs> I feel so alone. So did I turn it off? So now I'm stabbing the triangle onto his little neck. Hello. Hello. Oh my gosh. So much better. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, when I was making these on the Zuli tool and they were a little bigger, I was using like little red locks under here, which are fun because if you ever Google hummingbird close up, all the textures of their tiny little feathers, it's just, it's incredible. It's like a, um, like scales almost, like a dragon. They're like little right. dragons. Maybe since it's these, so it's so cool what locks do. Maybe since as these, far as texture, yeah. 
His wings want to go down. Maybe I'll make them go down. I kind of like his little weird tail. <laughs> Except I gotta cut this one a little shorter. So now I've got the his neck triangle on. I'm going to make the head triangle. And I think I'll use a little bit of the blue core just because I, I really like that color that's there. And then um, morphing towards green as it comes back because I want it to, I'm going to have it blend with the color that's on the back here. So I'm going to put a little bit of this leaf green, maybe a little bit of this. Raspberry blue, so pretty. This one can be a little bit bigger than the neck one. I think the um, the end of the jewelry tool is probably a pretty good guide for it. nice thing about triangles and shapes with fringe is that you can pull off from the end. Oh, I like that. In this case, I like this deeper blue kind of poking through it. So I probably don't need quite all of that's a lot of fiber. So I'm going to just pull a little bit off of the end here. Having a little mini stab it with these is great because there's a lot of um, place, times that you need to rest, rest your hummingbird so that you can figure out what to do. So the tip of the triangle is going towards the beak. And then you can see how the rest of the fiber comes back and blends with the back. And then the shaping is in, you know, the rest of the areas around it. I'm going to look at a, a picture here. Okay. So I like the way this is coming into the back here. And I'm even going to bring it kind of around the side of the neck a little bit. Some of that green. I love this light green with the red and the blue. It's a good color combo. And then sometimes with the ends of my needles, if I need to fringe something out so that it blends well, I just kind of you don't want to break your needles, but I just kind of tease it out so that I don't have such a round, such a round edge that I'm trying to deal with. All right, so here's where I am with that. Now I can see that I need to stab down on the top of the head to flatten it out give it a more definitive shape. This is just a little bit of sculpting here. I'm going to be all behind in my commentary because now I'm seeing it come together so pretty. Oh, thank you. Glad you like it. They're so, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm, hopefully everybody's keeping up. I feel like I'm, this is a little slow for me. They, but they, they come together very quickly. I think the wings want to go down. So that's what I'm going to do on this one. He's, he's like, he's trying to take something home. He's like, Ugh. but I think I'll, um, I might, iron, like I said, I might iron those. 
iron those out. Okay. On the side of his face, I have, what do I have here? Ooh, I have this, is that eggplant? Maybe. And I have a little bit of a dark oh, merino. I'm just gonna mix them together. Try to make sort of a nondescript dark. It could be dark green. I'm using a more of a purpley, purpley brown. Maybe dark green would be better. Add oregano to it. Now it's really going to be a dirty color. But that's okay. There's so many bright colors going on that a little bit of a muddy color or a gray color is can be can be really nice. So with a teeny tiny bit of it, um, I have an area here on the side of the head that I want to tone this, this color. Every single one is different. Like I don't do the same process. Sometimes maybe the, the core wool color that was there would be just right, you know? Just look at your reference picture and have fun, have fun. Someone said they're still in the wings. Okay, okay. <laughs> they were, I mean, they're laughing about it, yeah. but. <laughs> That's fine, you know, it's, um, the, the point is to enjoy, enjoy what you're doing, and if, you know, that's where you are, and that's what you're taking your time on, that's the whole idea, just for us to do something together, and. If you, before you leave today, if you could get some pictures of this one, I think people would like to see it posted okay. on Facebook. Okay. Because you can see it, but yeah. the still, yeah. you know, close-up really helps. So I still have my little bit of an S shape going on here. And my wings, like I said, wanted to point down. Um, but sometimes when they're pointing up, I, I would do quite a bit of, of coloring, you know, under under here so I'm a little bit this is unusual um, and you guys your wings are probably pointing up so maybe I can work on this one do you think that would be okay Kyla and and show how I would do that because they're at the same stage right now right right okay well what is your plan to finish this guy the one you're on um well, he needs eyes. Oh, gotcha. Um, but and and belly. But I'll show the belly on on this other one because it's going to have the wing details. More like yeah, yeah, probably more like what most people are doing. So if your wing is pointing up, you want to not have such a strong um, line here. Um, I have this fuzzy fiber. This is going to work pretty well. Well, before, before I do this, I'm going to do a little white here. I'm going to shingle the belly first. So I'm going to shingle at the tail. I think I want to use this um, little bit of this aqua that I have. So I'm going to point towards my tail feathers. I'm under the belly now. Put this on. It's just a very light, soft color, just not quite so white. And then I'll fold that over. And felt it down. So all my fringe is pointing towards the tail. And then to go transition from under the neck to that, I want to use maybe Serafina white, which 
I don't have. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I got it. I got it. This is actually snow hair, but same thing. Maybe a little too long. It'll be all right. So now I'm letting the white point. Let me cut this. That's the thing that these guys are so little, you can't have crazy long fibers. I'm sorry. If I turn that off, I can still hear you, right, Kyla? I yes. think so. Yes. I don't know. I hear Good. you. Good. I love shingling. I love the way it just covers ground, it blends colors. So shingling doesn't even always have to stick off. Like in this case, I'm not making this furry. You know, I'm just using the technique to really let the fringe ends do the work of blending colors. So I'm getting right up under his little neck fuzz kind of tucking it up in there, and then I'll put the neck fuzz on top. Probably would have been smart to do belly first, but. So that's his little blended belly. And then the, this bright neck color, I'm gonna let cover that fold of that last shingle. Okay. Now that the belly is on there, now I can transition the belly to the wings. And that I'm gonna do, I mean, it could just be a little bit of, a little short bit of like merino fiber. Um, I happen to have this fuzzy um, moose moss that is going to do the transition. It's gonna be really cool. And the fuzz of the, fiber is going to make yet another little kind of interesting texture on here. Yeah, the hummingbirds, the nests, and the um, pocket gnomes, I feel like are such a, a great way to enjoy your locks and use your this is what I was saying about the mini stab, like all the different ways you can use it to. So I'm letting the moose moss locks do their thing here. Have you ever thought about adding feet? Not really. You don't. I mean, these are like an impression, you know, to me. So I have to Google hummingbird feet to see what they look you like. You don't even see them; they're just they're just teeny tiny little black lines. Um, so I feel like it's like a a detail that maybe isn't uh, doesn't add much, you know. But that's just me. Someone's gonna do a hummingbird with teeny tiny little cute feet. And I'll be like, oh, I wanna try that. You could use the cut end of a lock for feet, someone said. Yeah. Oh, Marsha wants to come in to wash and dye. Oh. Uh. That is entirely possible, Marsha, <laughs> I think. Oh, I love these little things. They're making me so happy. So my friend does, um, isn't that cute? I love the way that, that goes. Um, 
Oh shoot, I'm gonna forget the acronym. It's it's a tapping, uh, anti-anxiety tapping technique. Huh. Um, so you tap your palm, tap the top of your head, and um, I don't know very much about it, but I would like to learn more about it. But I, I really feel like what we do, what we're doing, is fills that similar sensory. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so that's how I just put a little transitional fiber, and then also it helps, like, if you want your wings to stick up, felting your wing in that direction with this fiber is what helps it, helps it do that. So that's that little, that little guy. So I could work Joyce, on... Joyce said it's MDR. Is it MDR? No, that, um, that's not sounding familiar, but I can tell you very quickly. I am she, assuming that's what Joyce is talking about, but I been, don't know. Oh, she's been posting um, some videos. And EFT. 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 And her um, EFT tutorial, I'm trying to see what her... I want to tell you what her YouTube channel is so that um, I'm just not sure if it's her name or EFT or emotional freedom technique also known as tapping is one of my favorite tools in the world to use because it almost instantaneously makes you feel better emotional freedom technique hmm. and oh, it is it's an immediate <coughs> it has an immediate effect and it's called Tap for Joy, is her YouTube channel. Hmm. Tap for Joy. Yep. Joyce <coughs> so. is saying EMDR is similar to hypnosis. Oh, yeah. So she can give you info on that. Oh, yeah. Someone's slack supply is very low. They're <laughs> oh, hoping no. they can order soon. <laughs> oh, I know. I hope so, too. I, hate, I hesitate to say anything because... Every time I think that I have a plan, um, I do not. Okay, so all we need now are little eyes. Well, my, this guy still needs his belly, but I'm going to, um, you know, I'm kind of at the same place in, in both of these, except now this one's, this one's belly is done as well. So on the eyes, all I'm doing is taking a little bit of black core, teeny tiny bit, and I don't try to make a, um, a three-dimensional eye. I just felt a little round, um, a little, you know, as much as I can, just a round circle. So if you want to roll the fiber in your fingers just to start to bring it together, you can do that. And then pay attention to where the eye goes. It's, um, this is another kind of important aspect to making it look hummingbirdy. Um, my this beak is set a little high, but it goes from the side. It goes just above where the beak comes in, and not quite halfway between the beak and the back of the head, ever so slightly um, closer to the beak, and just felt a little circle. They have quite a bit of um, angled transition from the head to the beak. So when I have, when we're doing the toothpick technique, that's something I saw was a little bit too abrupt from the toothpick to the head because it went like toothpick, bam, head. But they really do, like quite a bit of fiber is going to come down um, towards this, you know, towards the top of the beak. And then good luck getting him in the same place on each side. Eye placement is always tricky. Yeah. I'm using a nice strong needle right now because I really just want to, it's probably a, it's probably a, um, well, it's probably just a, a 38, but it felt strong. This is a 40. And then I think it helps to have a really thin rim, um, 
of a lighter color around that. So I'm going to use this, this aqua that's over here. I usually go towards aqua around the eyes. Just seems to work well, but like a light green, um, a gray would be okay. And there's no easy way to do this. You're just trying to draw a thin line around the eye and it's not easy. But this detail does make a big difference. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who could get a lot more detail than I do with these. If your rim color is too wide and takes up too much of your eye, you could always go back. Rather than trying to get the rim color thinner, go back with a little bit of black. Um, you always look derpy from the front. I don't know what I'm doing wrong there. Not getting the head wide enough, maybe? EMDR, eye movement desensitization, desensitization and reprocessing. Wow, that is so cool. Yes, we were, I feel like we were talking about that before, Kyla, for some reason. Something about um, the PTSD in the eyes. I can't remember what that conversation was. So cool. I think we just, you know, we think we know and understand so much. Or we, we wish we did, I guess. <laughs> Especially in medicine. Um, and there, of course, is a, a lot we know. But so much, yeah. So, so much, much we don't know. Yeah. When you have a moment, if you could show the eye closer again, please. Yeah. So there's one side. And there's the other side. And then you need your little white dot. Definitely a little white dot. Glad you got your walk in today. We did. We got a good one in. It was um, about three and a half miles. Nice. Actually, lovely. Oh, the little white dot. So good. They sometimes have a little white feather. I guess it's their ear. Sometimes I include it, sometimes I don't. It can look a little janky. Oh boy, this eye is not round, let me put it that way. And probably a little bit big. <laughs> oh well, one's good. The goal is round, yes. <laughs> They're so sweet. This guy's just, just looking for his nectar. All right, this guy just needs his belly. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the other one. Any news about the ground hair tutorial? Everything has ground to a halt. <laughs> yeah, no news, unfortunately. I've um, it won't it won't be hard to do. Like I've, it's all figured out. It's just it's going to be once we get rolling again. Um, just the timing. You know what needs to be taken care of. 
first and we're not um, we're not overlapping right now here so it's just not not possible yet It's very strange. We were calling at work, we were calling March, um, you know, way back in January, February. <laughs> we were calling it March Madness because we had so much planned and so much we were working oh, yeah. on and unrolling and now it has a new meaning. Um, we don't know about online ordering timing yet. There is no B kit yet. That is another thing that is on hold. Mm -hmm. The B kit, once we do get rolling, it should, should be, be soon. We should be able to do that pretty quickly. Yeah, it's very, very simple. Pretty simple, I should say. Um. Have you ever used glass eyes for any of your pieces? Nope. I don't think you have, have you? Mm -hmm. Nope. Almost telling us birders call the rim an eye ring. Eye ring? Yeah. Makes sense. Couldn't the birders have gotten a little more creative? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Paul. <laughs> oh, that ring around their eye? Yeah, we call, we, we call that the eye ring. <laughs> it's a little downward wing bird with his weird, his weird floppy wings. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll have to do something about that. Any reason why you don't use glass eyes? If I say it's going to sound critical, and I don't want to sound critical because I, I mean, I see things that I love with glass eyes, but for me, you like to make the eye the way that I you like to want create, it, and the wool allows you to do that. I like to create the eye. I like to make the piece out of wool, and I don't like to have a different the clash of that hard shiny. Um, and I've been, I've enjoyed, if I am going to change the texture of the wool, I've enjoyed natural, you know, ways to do that. Um, I, I don't know. I guess it's just, it's a part of the sculpture to me to make it right. to felt the eye. I would think certain sculptures would be awesome with that contrast. Definitely. Like that you really wanted that, but in a lot of the cute, sweet, fuzzy, yeah, not like snake creatures. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to like, it's also a little taxidermy -y to me. So depending on the scale. So um, right, right. that's just what, that's just, it just wasn't part of the evolution of, of the way that Right. I, I like to do things. I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. And I wasn't. Right. Well, and someone's also the person who asked that question is also said um, expression with a question mark, which you can control Absolutely. all of that when you do the yeah. eye. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the whole thing, the whole sculpture, is like part your decisions. Part the texture of the wool speaking, um, or the type of wool. Um, so I, I, I don't mind imperfection, I guess. I kind of, I, it's part of what I like about this medium. So my eyes are never perfect and never, you know, they're not like ultra realistic. I don't, I don't know. But, okay, so this, I like this little one. He's so cute. Done. Yeah. So tips on hanging it with that fishing <laughs> you line. You can't even see it yet. 
<laughs> oh, I see it on the table in front of you. Oh, oh. <laughs> I was holding it up, and you're like, so cute. What was <laughs> what was the question? Um, well, I'm asking the question oh. if people want to hang them, because in theory, most mm. people would. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's a little tricky figuring out where to place. Yeah, I think you can. I think you can eyeball the balance point. Um, so what I do is I take my fishing line on my needle. I go down from the top, all the way out the bottom, and back up. And then I make a knot like as as close as I can um, to the sculpture with the, the, the two, you know, obviously one's a lot longer. Um, and then cut the one as short as you can so the knot's right there and then the one string is going up. What's that guy? This guy just needs eyes. He's sweet for different reasons. I can't wait to see what you guys made. People are liking the downward wing, too, because they do both in yeah. flight. Yeah. But I do feel like I need to... Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might... Like, I like the natural gray, but it's bugging me that his wings are bent. Um, so I might just try to straighten that, or I might felt a little more fiber in there to stiffen it straighter. A little bit, I think yeah. That's what I'll do. I mean, I'll just try to do that while we're stand, sitting here and see what happens. So I'm still keeping the structure of the lock, and I want to try to keep the color. I'm going to grab some um, of this gray. Oh, oh, this was alpaca. That might not. Well, I'll try it. I also have that Shetland. Oh. I have, I have the bunny, the chick, and now the hummingbird felt alongs all still sitting, oh, on this, sitting there, sitting on this table. So let's see what this does. If I can slap this baby straight, let's see. I feel like if I just iron it. It would be good. So for you to see what people have made today, if you do a post on oh, fanfare. I would, I would love to, yeah. Thing. Yeah, Serafina Felting Fanfare. So you can post this guy, and then people can post theirs. I'll try to get some decent pictures before I go, and I will put... Um, I'll put it on the Facebook business page, and yeah, that's better. And uh, fanfare. Okay, cool. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to see. I just, it's so like, you know, so many different colors, um, so many different possibilities of their little positions. And, Do you have an idea for next week? Is the question. Oh, that's a good question. I was trying to talk Kyla into nests. <laughs> I, I said I'm, you know, better behind the camera <laughs> <laughs> or on the phone. <laughs> um, okay. Yes. Let's talk it out. Let's plan. Let's control the crap out of something we can control the crap out of. Did you guys notice I chopped my own hair off? I was like, I don't want hair anymore. And I cut it off. I think I did okay. I haven't seen the back yet. <laughs> Who's seen the back? No one's seen the back. <laughs> right? My I can kids? promise you I am not taking scissors to my hair. It's not happening. <laughs> Oh, it's funny. You see Marsha's comment. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Marsha, I am treating this like it is my my own world here. <laughs> it is right now. <laughs> <It> is. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, so now they're a little more, a little more straightened out. It's good. Yeah, Kyla's nests are awesome. Oh, yeah. A kingfisher, a mouse. <clears throat> The mouse. The, the mouse. We could do sleepy somethings. Um, we could definitely do sleepy mice. They're always fun. And there's a little bit of evolution to how I've been making those. Um, right. And they don't require, you know, anything too specific. So everybody would probably have on hand what they need. Um, any other votes? Flowers, but flowers require some wet felting. That's yeah. Can be tricky. Flowers would be a little involved, and maybe you know people not have what they what they need. Um, kingfisher. I've never made a kingfisher, and I like to. This is sort of like, you know, hey, let's just make these at the same time versus, um, you know, teaching a whole whole new Something tutorial. New. Mm hmm So I goldfish. Goldfish, goldfish goldfish are so fun. Um and goldfish can be made with the big variety of we should make some I like goldfish. Have you done sloths? I have not made sloths. A two D. A 2D, hmm. A 2D, I feel like would be hard to make sure everybody was starting off with the same. Yeah, like what's your stuff. background? Yeah. Yeah. So let's, um, let's tentatively say goldfish. I think everybody either has some yellow core or, you know, even you use off white chunky core. Then you get your, um, you know, your top coat colors, and <laughs> so, and then, um, I'll, but I'll, gnomes. what's that? Someone said gnomes oh, as yeah. well. Gnomes are so fun. Hmm. Okay, wait, now I'm torn. I know, right? I know. You might have to mull it okay. over. Let's do goldfish. Let's do goldfish. And oh, then mushrooms. What's that? Mushrooms. Oh. Lee just did a mushroom tutorial. Did anybody see Lee's mushroom tutorial? So cool. Um, she did some wet felting, yeah, right? She did a little wet felted top, which is nice because it wet felting gives you like a a hold it gives you like a skin. It gives you like this different look. Like you can tell when something's wet felted versus needle felted. So goldfish would be really fun. We could have a lot of fun with that. And then, um, you know, I don't know. I would love to keep doing this as long as um, our schedule here is lighter like this, which I think it's going to be for a little while. Um, in terms of opening, um, we just don't know. Um, so, you know, last night I was laying in bed and I was like, I should open. Why aren't I open? And then, <laughs> and then the, I woke up and I'm like, oh no, it's, you know, it's not responsible. It's not safe. You know, <laughs> like, so it is, it's been, um, it's been really challenging to figure out. And I, I don't think anybody really can. Like, I think we're all just doing the best we can. And I'm so, um, you know, I really overall am amazed at the power of people and um, everything that I feel like, I feel like we're in a shakedown. It's like, all right, let's, we're going to, we're going to mix this up and we're going to see what sticks. And then it's, we don't know yet what's going to be sticking at the end, you know? So I'm just, I'm happy that we can do this kind of stuff. And um, well, that's all. I have a whole, a whole lot of thoughts. I'm sure we all do. <laughs> so we're sitting, yeah. sitting, sitting around. Um. Wondering what's going to happen. If you do goldfish and someone doesn't have gold, really any, it could be. Oh, people uh, were making them. Elongate, like it could be any People were making them all kinds fish. of colors. Yeah. yeah. And Definitely. the shape itself could be modified to be 
more like a betta fish or more, you know, just, oh, yeah. um, it can be a little different. Yeah. And Lee's m- mushroom tutorials, that yeah. all that is on Felting Farmer Lady. Yes. That's on Facebook. Yes. And I think she said she was putting together a little package for them. So there's a little something to fill your fiber fix. Um, so we're going to, when we do open, we will be sending a newsletter. Um, hopefully you all are signed up for the newsletter. And of course, I'll, you know, I'll say something, but, um, on Facebook probably, but, um, that's going to be your, your best bet in getting notified. And my best guess is that we will, um, just be operating at kind of a minimal, very sort of maybe just shipping two days a week. Um, so, but we'll let you know, we'll keep you posted. It's just the, 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 the plan or the decision has not come into clarity to a degree that, that I need. So, um, anyway, thank you. That was fun. It was really fun for me and I can't wait to see what everybody does. So hopefully you're on fanfare and yes, you know, pictures. and you've got three more wires at least. So I want to <laughs> see lots. I want to see lots and lots. Um, all right. Thank you all. Thank you. And stay safe. And we'll, um, we'll be in touch and we'll plan on goldfish and I'll try to put together kind of the things I'm using or the potential things you could use a little sooner. I was a little, um, a little late this week, but, um, all right. Take care. Awesome. Bye Thank guys. Thank you, Kyla. See ya. Bye.